Hi, this is Ron Bailey, and this is Chamber Chat. Chamber Chat is our opportunity for each week for the Greater Jackson County Chamber of Commerce to get with uh, not only our members, but folks uh, in our city and county that are making things happen, and that's uh, truly one of the uh, reasons that we have Laura Pitts with us today. Laura is the, uh, uh, she's the head person at the uh, Scottsboro Public Library and uh, we want to talk to Laura about uh, uh, things that are going on uh, at, at our local library. Uh, welcome to Chamber Chat. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I love, I love getting to talk about things at the library. Well, there's hardly a week goes by that I don't see somewhere in the media, mm -hmm. in the paper, or on the radio or someplace that uh, there's something exciting happen, uh, happening at the library. Oh, yes. Tell us about your <laughs> summer lineup. Well, um, our summer reading program is our biggest program that we do um, all year long. It's for children all over the county. So right now we have 459 children that are participating in the program. There's a lot of children. Uh, three years ago when I started, we may have had 150 for the entire summer that came through. So having 459 sign up at the beginning of the summer is a huge deal for us. So wow. it kind of puts some pressure on our programs and things. But our program runs the whole month of June and then the whole month of July. And we challenge kids with literacy educational programs to read books and then to come in and learn some different things. Our program theme this year is all about sports and being fit and doing exercise. So that's been a fun challenge to try to make this the theme work with the books that we have in the in the library but um it's been it's been really good our numbers have been up and um every day i mean j today for example we'll be over at the splash pad um just really blessing some people with some snacks and some drinks and sharing some outreach about what we do at the library so uh, uh, i think it says a lot more about you than than perhaps <laughs> uh, what you're doing but this big increase of going from 100 to 400 uh I mean, what in the world are you are, um, are you bribing these kids with candy or something every day I, you know I have my philosophy is is a lot about if you don't get them when they're young when they grow up and they make the decision to stay or to leave or to bring their own families back if that wasn't a fun experience for them as a child they may not come back and so they are the future of the library. They're the future readers or the future people that come in and check the materials out, use the computers, anything that they need information-wise. They're the future of it. So that's my, one of my big focuses to make sure that we provide a good literacy program for children, that we show them that reading is fun. There are children in this whole county that love to read, and then there are children that don't like reading for whatever that reason might be. And so my goal is to try to make that learning about reading and wanting to read fun for those children who think that well we just come to the library and we just get a book but it's not just about getting a book one of the things that we have going on this morning we have the boys and girls club at the library and they're participating in our lego program mm. so lego club is a huge thing because we've got kids coming in they're making things with their hands they're they're using their creativity I challenge them when they get their creations built that, hey, you could turn this into a story or, hey, let's go find a story about something that maybe you created that you might like to read. And it helps those children realize that just because I'm in a library, I don't just have to pick up a book, but there are other things that I can do that make reading fun. Sounds like you're really challenging their creativity. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and it just appears to me that uh, so many in this generation have sort of lost that mm -hmm. enthusiasm for creativity of making stories and mm -hmm. imagination and all of that. Well, I we at some point in our lives we lose childhood. We can never really pinpoint that moment when we lost it, but at some moment we lost that creativity and that imagination that we had. And so one of the things that I want to do is to try to preserve that for as long as I can. It's going to leave. We're, those children are going to lose that, and it's part of life. But if I can hold on to it just a little bit longer, it might take them a little bit somewhere different in the future with that you know bit of creativity they could keep. What your opinion is uh, near the age, the age range where reading ceases to be fun, exciting, <laughs> entertaining, and they move on to something else? I think it happens when they hit high school. I think that if you've not been a very avid reader before then, the chances are you may not be a very avid reader through high school. You may pick it back up later in life, but 
we have uh, sports and clubs and activities and then there's a pressure of making sure our grades are okay because we've got to get into college and then we get to college and we have all this reading I I was a um, English major in high school I mean in college and I never got to read for fun I always read for school related things so I think that it happens somehow when we hit high school we we, we get bogged down with so many things that we, we forget the mm-hmm. enjoyment I was an English minor in college so I identify with what what you're saying um, and the, the reason that I was minoring is I loved literature so mm-hmm. much and it was all reading of stories and but there wasn't a lot of reading that you wanted to do, right? Often, yeah. And it's been a challenge for me when I have patrons, especially adult patrons, that come in and they say, what's a good mystery book or a good fiction book? And I think, I really don't know one. And it's not because I don't like to read or I don't read. It's because I had that gap in my life where a lot of these really good authors that had these really great books come out, I was bogged down reading other things for school. And so I just really didn't didn't do that and so it's been one of my personal challenges to try to go out on the shelf and try to find something that I might not normally read to read so that I can provide more information to my my adult patrons. Somehow we've got to make that transition from Nancy Drew to adult uh, well you know James Patterson it's very or interesting my young adult fiction collection my Y stories they're very popular among all ages so I have a lot of adults that only want to read YA books and then I have some um, of my you know my kids that want to read it too so that area they may not like James Patterson but man they really liked some dystopian literature that was mm-hmm. in the, the young adult genre so mm-hmm. I see a lot more pull from adults and um, college age students coming over that young adult literature too. I wanted to just touch briefly uh, something you said a while ago about uh, you mentioned the county. Mm-hmm. Do you have any kind of uh, sharing programs with other libraries around the county? Um, right now we we don't we're not really set up as a a library system like one might think of in a larger community so mm-hmm. think Huntsville or think Birmingham they have a, a main library there and then they have branch libraries and so things operate a little differently that is a goal that I wish that we could move toward that would provide us to, the ability to have a bookmobile the ability to take books from one end of the county to the next Woodville Public Library we work really well with them they have um, a huge need for large print books and so we provide them a six-month checkout of some extra large print books that we have that those patrons that they have can have access to um, but it is a, a future goal that I would like to see somehow that we could all work together as a group to come up with a way that we could share resources because I have a lot of people from the county that come to my library and I know there are a lot of people from my library in the Scottsboro area that may visit Woodville or Stevenson or Bridgeport so it's definitely an option that I would like for us to all in the future you know look mm-hmm. at and I, and, and I think you know Google may help with that you mm-hmm. know I, I think Perhaps. that that might help with different grants and things might make some of those possibilities for a bookmobile or some shared programming possible. I do have some awareness that Bridgeport, Stevenson, mm-hmm. Pisgah, Woodville, these areas Mm -hmm. have a great interest in their library. Mm -hmm. It's just funding. Funding is is a huge huge issue. Um, We are still level funded from the state, and that's not necessarily a state issue that kind of trickles down from the federal government, and then it goes to the state, and then then we get our funding. Um, But that's why it's so important that people understand when they come into the library that they have to pay for a copy or a print or if they print too many pages of something they're still responsible for that ink's expensive toner's expensive uh, maintenance on those machines and sometimes you know those things can add up over time so when people don't uh, return a book on time and there's a late fee or if they lose a book or they damage a book and they have to replace it um, sometimes people can get upset with that and I understand that completely we don't ever intend for things to get torn up or lost but that is a cost that every library once they don't get that money back they lose in a sense and it does it really does add up and it adds up for our ability to provide more books and newer materials for patrons if we don't we don't have that let's talk briefly about the electronics Mm -hmm. portion of uh, the library of uh, switching from hardbound books (laughs) to computers and readers and all of that talk about that transition well we our computer lab is probably our most trafficked area at the library we have people that come in and use it for job searching purposes 
um, educational purposes and then just leisurely purposes. I've seen a huge trend in individuals that want to check out a book because they like to have the hard copy book in their hands, but they're traveling and, you know, books can be heavy when you go on an airplane and different mm -hmm. things like that. So an iPad app or a book app on, on a reading device, whether it's a Nook, a Kindle, or an iPad, is very helpful. We provide OverDrive eBook subscriptions for our patrons. So if you're a library member and you have a library card and it's active and you have no fines or anything on your card, you have access to OverDrive and it's a selection of ebooks that we are able to partner with other libraries across the state of Alabama to have access to. The books are not really contingent on, like if you see a book in on Overdrive, it, we might not have that book in the library in a hardbound. It's strictly a digital ebook collection, but that is a service that we offer patrons of all ages. And all they have to do is have a library card. We have a sheet of paper that tells them how to access that, and then they can do that from the comfort of their home. One more minute. Let's talk about uh, Art Sunday in the Park in your mm -hmm. book sale. Mm -hmm. Um, every year we have a huge used book sale in the back meeting room during Art Sunday. Those donations are provided through community members that need to get rid of books. Um, they're cleaning out closets, cleaning out bedrooms, houses, anything. So we, we take donations at all times. Uh, feel free to bring any of those donations to the library during regular business hours. And, um, you know, books are, hardback books are a dollar, paperbacks are a quarter. And all of the money that we raise through that assists our friends of the library organization with different things that they might need to help the library. Laura, we really appreciate you coming and being with us today to talk about what's going on at the Scottsboro it. Public Library. You're doing a <laughs> terrific you. job. Thank well, I love what I do, so thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, that's Chamber Chat for today, a production of the Greater Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. And we hope you'll join us each week for Chamber Chat and we'll see you down the road.